The gentlelady from Florida is recognized for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I'll, I'll begin by noting that I believe the gentleman from Maryland is correct, that the man who attempted to assassinate Justice Kavanaugh in his home, uh, my understanding is, was ultimately prosecuted. Uh, however, unfortunately, uh, that horrific incident is just part of a much broader, more pervasive, ongoing threat to our courts and to our justices that has been the subject of uh, requests for production of documents and information uh, by this committee. Uh, specifically, there were several incidents in which Supreme Court justices were threatened because of their previous judicial decisions and incidents. Th these fit into a larger campaign that is designed to threaten and intimidate, to frighten and dissuade justices from issuing opinions. One group published the home addresses of six justices and has organized harassment at their personal residences where they live with their spouses and their children. This is clearly an effort to intimidate and threaten these justices and to attempt to affect their decisions. In a letter dated June 23rd, 2022 to the Attorney General, this committee noted these actions appear to be attempts to intimidate and influence the justices' rulings in violation of Section 1507 of Title 18 of the U.S. Code, which prohibits pickets or parades in or near a building or residence of a judge when done with the intent to interfere, obstruct, or impede the administration of justice, or with the intent of influencing any judge in the discharge of his duty. While protesting is a protected and fundamental First Amendment activity, courts have distinguished conduct that is intended to obstruct or pervert the course of justice. That conduct does not retain such protections. This letter went on to request two categories of documents. The first, all documents and communications between or among the Department of Justice and the Executive Office of the President referring or relating to the harassment and intimidation campaign outside of justices' homes. Mr. Uriarte, to date, have any documents been produced in response to that January 23rd, 2022 letter? Congressman, thank you for the question. I want to start by saying, as you know, this per issue is something that is incredibly personal to the Attorney General as a former judge. And as you may remember, after the Dobbs decision leaked, he made, took the unprecedented step of having the U.S. Marshals protect the homes of the justices. We've had as many as 70 U.S. Marshals in place to protect those justices' homes, and their mission there is focused on life and safety of the judges. And that is something that is incredibly important to the AG and incredibly important to all of us at the Department of Justice. Now, in terms of the document request that you're referring to, um, of course, I'm happy to take that back and see if there's additional information that we can provide. Again, part of the value of these conversations, I think, is to understand the priorities of the committee. And if this is an, an issue that is a high priority for the committee, as I understand you're saying now, that will definitely inform our ability to um, produce those documents or to get you information sooner. So would it be correct to say, Mr. Uriarte, that as of today, no documents have been produced in response to request number one? Um, I don't have that request in front of me, um, but I'm happy to take that back. Request number two, all documents and communications between or among employees of the Department of Justice referring or relating to the harassment and intimidation campaign outside of Justice's homes, including those sent or received by employees of the United States Attorney's Office for the District of Maryland, and the United States Attorney's Office for the Eastern District of Virginia. Uh, Mr. Uriarte, uh, same question. Uh, to this date, have any documents responsive to request number two been produced to this committee? Again, I'm happy to take that back, but as I said, my commitment to you is that we will work with you and your staff to be as efficient and effective as possible and respond to your requests. And again, the more we understand about your priorities among the various oversight requests, the more effective I think we can be at helping to meet your informational need. But to the best of your knowledge, as you sit here today before this committee, to this date, no documents responsive to this request from this committee have been provided. Uh, that is consistent with my understanding, but I want to get back to you on that. And again, that request is from the prior Congress. Starting in this Congress, we have taken steps to respond to the committee's request, including the production of 448 pages 
earlier this month on a different topic to which was the subject of the subpoena. But again, if this is a priority for you, we will certainly take that into account as we continue to work through the various requests. And I will note that this letter concluded with a request that this information be provided as soon as possible, but no later than 5 p.m. on July 8, 2022. And with that, Mr. Chairman, I yield back. I thank the gentlelady.